All I think right. it's a good Thanks. idea to have one person leave the house like Dave does all of our shopping. Yeah. And he does all of our runs and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's how my husband is. He, he does everything. And my son and I, we stay home. Because <laughs> I'm going to see my grandkids, man. I, I don't want to have any problems. Okay. Right. All right. So, ladies, um, I'm so glad you're here. Um, as always, so a lot of people will sign up for it, and then they don't show up, and they'll get the recording, so it's fine. Thank you, and congratulations for being here. Um, I'm going to introduce Susie, and then, um, Susie, once I um, introduce you, I'm going to hop off. And it's not okay. that I'm not interested. It's just that I have you to love You to love me. It's okay. I do love no, you. I know. I know. No, I'm happy to do this for the ladies in the, in the group because you know, the, I, you know, I'm. I want to support you all the time and support the women. You know, that's my mission in life too. So absolutely, absolutely. Well, Susie, I can. I can do this. I can do yes. this. Oh, I know you can. So, <laughs> so she's going to share with you Fisbo amazingness, and um, Susie is the. Um, she's my friend, and she's the only female on the uh, board of EXP World Holdings. And so if you want to know about EXP, she's absolutely the expert. Um, but for today, she's going to share with us how to, um, how to, you know, win FISBO. So exactly. I'll it over to you. Thank you, Susie. All right. Thank you, Jan, for everything you do. Um, wishing you coolness. Get evening primrose. Oh yeah, I know. I have to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm going to try to share my screen if I can find where my slides went. And I'm loving that this is actually a smaller group of people because what we can do here is not just me sit and talk, but actually, you know, we can have a Q and A and just as long as I can figure out where everybody's at, I don't know where the chat is, but um, feel free to interrupt or, um, you know, however, however you need to ask me a question. So just a little bit about me. Some of you know me. Um, we might have met, you know, at, uh, at an event. We might be chatting and be friends on Facebook. Kathy, you know, we sat next to each other at lunch at this She's Unstoppable. And I, uh, the reason that Jan and I are even together is because I share Jan and Judy's heart for supporting women and helping women rise up in our business or in, in life, really. Um, you know, I, I love, I do love men, but our chromosomes match and I feel like we should, you know, we should be getting more than our fair share. So there's, there's that. And, you know, that's all I'm going to say on, on that. Um, who am I and why should you listen to me? Well, I'm going into my 22nd year in business this year. I'm a broker in California, Pennsylvania, Florida, and I have my salesperson's license in New Jersey. I've been the number one uh, selling agent in the, my Keller Williams office in Pennsylvania back in the 2000s. And um, at this stage of the game, as Jan mentioned, I'm a board member on EXP World Holdings. I ran the agent uh, advisory council for the, from its inception till just in January, and I'm still an actively selling agent. So that's the more important thing to know about my board position. I'm the only actively selling agent on the board of directors, plus I'm a female. So what I love about FISBOs and why I wanted to teach about this is because right now, you know, most of us are hamstrung by our states and this pandemic with not being able to do business at all or having to pivot our businesses and do uh, you know contortions and able to show properties. And so um, what I like about for sale by owners is because these are people with their hands up right now, regardless of what the market is doing and they need to sell their properties. And boy, do we have an opportunity to talk to them because if you, if you and I are having trouble, and I know I am, I'm bringing a listing on in Pennsylvania and one in California. And you know, even with all the information I have at my fingertips, I'm question. I'm like, what? Are, how are we going to do this? How are we able to show houses? How are we able to, you know, list properties? So if we have all these resources, imagine what these poor people are doing. Not to mention the fact that they have zero idea about what's happening in the mortgage roller coaster right now because it is a roller coaster, right? Um, so the reason I like Fisbos, they have their hand up. I call it fastest source of bucks and opportunity. You can go out for regular listings right now. Most of those people are on the fence about what they're going to do. Um, you can do internet lead generation. The average 
time for those things to close is 344 days. I don't want to wait that long to get paid, especially now that opportunity is down because some buyers are going to move to the sidelines, some sellers are moving to the sidelines. So this is a way to, um, you know, fill, fill your, um, your pipeline. Somebody's got a chat. Let's see. I'm in New York. You cannot call a FISBO or expires. Tell me about that, Michelle. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Michelle. So, hi. So in New York State right now, until September 23rd, we are not allowed to call expired listings or for sale by owners because we're in a state of emergency. So we've been shut down here, um, so to speak. So I'm being creative and I'm not calling. And if you, any of you are in New York State, don't slap my hand on this, okay? But I've been reaching out through like Facebook um, Marketplace. I've been reaching out through Zillow because I'm not calling. I'm just sending, I'm clicking the button, button. Is this property still available? And then if they respond or when they respond, I identify myself as to who I am. And, um, you know, a lot of times I might have somebody who is, who could potentially be interested in their property, but if not, I'm identifying myself and letting them know that I'm here to help. So it's, oh. it's hard though. It's not easy. It's really I would hard. love, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to my New York agents and find out and the broker an exact solution for you, because that's interesting in that, you know, Pennsylvania is also completely shut down. Um, but properties are still getting sold. So I, I'm, I find it hard to believe that the state said no for sale by owner, no, uh, like no real estate business can be conducted whatsoever. I find that hard to believe, but let's get the, uh, let's get the legal interpretation on that one. And it's different, right? And that's a great point that you bring up, Michelle, state by state, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. I know here in California, we're, we're completely shelter in place, same thing um, until the end of May. Yet I talked to agents this week who are in the area and there, you know, there's been guidelines from the state association of realtors and how it could get done and properties are still selling everywhere, which is crazy. Pennsylvania is like New York. And I talked to one of my agents say she had a closing yesterday and she said, business is picking up. I'm like, how is this possible? But it's the spring, right? And some people are just going to continue to act. you know, not everybody is in the panic state, people do have a different panic going on where they need to move. They might have sold their house in March and now they have nowhere to live in limited opportunity. So um, I feel like that's a conversation to have for for sale by owners, but I don't want to, uh, I'll find out more about New York. This is a special scenario. But my, what I'm teaching you today can be during the pandemic or after the pandemic, you have to determine what's available Susie, in your state. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt, but I just wanted to say if you can, when you research that, Get it back to me, then I can get that communication out to everyone because I really yep. okay. Because I know and the one thing at EXP, the one of the things that I love about the company is that we have a huge legal team and we are because we're, you know, we're a publicly traded company, we have to always be super careful about you know things that we do. And so the brokers that we have in New York, I'll find out from them as soon as we I have a board meeting directly after this. So I have to pop off right at the top of the hour. Um, and I'm happy to come back at any time and talk to you guys about this. We could even do a little listing challenge. I would love that, but I'll find out Michelle for New York state specifically. Cause I know in California, we're still allowed to, we're still allowed to talk to people and do different. We have a whole bunch of legal forms that we have now, again, just around the whole situation, but let me find out for you. Cause that would be really good to know for me too. So back to why I love FISBO. Here's about me. That's me. Um, but what I, what I love about for sale by owners is, can you guys hear me okay? I hear something in the background. Sorry. Um, they're fastest source of bucks and opportunity. They have their hands up right now. They don't know what they don't know because we don't even know, right? You're proof positive. We don't even know what's going on in New York and what's allowed and what's not. Um, and what I love is I've always in, in the, I got licensed in 99 by 2003. I was almost all completely listings because I think listings are leverage. And for every one listing, I, I expect to get three pieces of business out of that. And 
right now there's, you know, inventory is down, but there's plenty of for sale by owners out there. And here's some stats from NAR from 2018. Um, 89% of all homes were sold with a realtor, meaning they're good. Only 10% of those for sale by owners are going to sell by themselves. Hey, Susie, we're not seeing that. If you, do you have that? Uh, no. no, let's see what's happening here. My slide. No, no, I, I don't have it on a slide. Oh, okay, I just wanted to but make sure. I do, but I do have a Facebook group that I'm going to talk about later okay. that everybody can join um, because I have, I have all, there's this class should be like a one whole day class where really we could delve into the scripts and everything like that. And I'm going to touch on stuff, but I have all kinds of resources for everybody for my, um, in, my, for, in my Facebook group because there's so much. Um, and I do have the stats listed in there. So if you join my group, I'll tell you about it later. For sale by owners sell, typically they sell for 20% less than those that sell with a realtor. And this is all data collected by NAR. So it's just so funny. And, um, you know, when I talk about mindset, you know, I like to ask the question, why, why do you think people go for sale by owner? Why, why do they go for sale by owner? What do you girls think? Maybe money. They want to make all the money. Yep. Yep. And, and so they when I was picking easy, they think it's easy. Oh yes. I love that. All we do is we stick a sign in the yard and get a check, big check handed in our hand. And it's just that simple. Right. And so, um, yeah, I love that. I love all the different reasons that, in my mind, when I was first calling for sale by owners, um, I thought I was scared. I was scared. And I was thinking, oh, they're thinking I hate real estate agents. Uh, I had a bad deal the last time. Um, you know, real estate agents are, are used car salesmen. And really the only reason that these people want to do this, I mean, maybe there's a handful that have those things in mind, but really it's about saving the money. So let me just quick show you the next slide if I can, why is it giving me that? Okay. The first thing to do about um, mindset is it's getting your head in the game. So I just want to say you all are awesome for even being here today. Maybe you've done a for sale by owner before. Maybe you haven't, but to even be thinking about your business at this time and getting your head in the game when really it's so much easier to spend every day watching the latest news updates. What's the craziest thing that's happening now? No, this is your opportunity to really in this crisis time is this for sale by owner thing is a huge money making opportunity for you. Those people need your help. So, um, you know, let's see the only, the, the thing about mindset that I love to talk about is this next one. I had fear if my thing would work here. There we go. This, here's what we said. Here's what the for sale by owner is thinking. This is what I thought I was, I, until I collected all the data. Um, and it was a seller's market and it is still going to be a seller's market for a little bit of time. So they're not wrong in that, but navigating it is going to become an, uh, quite the challenge. So let me show you this video and hopefully it'll come from the point I want it to. There we go. Is that coming through? Can you hear that? No, it's very soft. What you need to do is stop sharing. And then, um, so stop, stop the video, stop, sh and then hit share. And then off to the bottom left, you'll see share computer sound. And that's the one you want to hit, Susie. Okay, let me, <gasps> this is so many moving parts. I don't know if I can do it. You can do it. I don't know. Stop sharing. Go to the video. No, no. You have to hit share. And then okay, share, bottom, again. share computer sound. Make sure it's on desktop and then hit share. Share computer sound. You see it on the bottom left? Share computer sound, check that box. Then we'll be able to hear it. Oh, you queen, you queen of Zoom. <laughs> you are the, oh my gosh, it's asking me to install the Zoom video device. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. What, are you, what are you girls seeing right now? I see your screen with a, with a wave and all your bunch of stuff. All right, let me get back go. to this. Now there. So now you just hit the hit the video or whatever. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with the video, but basically I'm gonna scoot to the end yeah, of the well, video. You now you can do it. We'll probably hear it. Can you hear it? Turn it up. Terror 
terror, terror, terror. And then people start going out of the airplane. And the guy walks you up to the end of the thing and you're standing and your toes are on the edge and you're looking out down to death. They say, on three. One. Two. And he pushes you on two because people grab on three. That would be me. That would be me. out of the airplane. And in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying. There's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. The lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? What do you need that fear for? Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. All right. So that's my, um, I love this video because one of my favorite quotes for motivating myself and any agents in my group is everything you want is on the other side of this fear. So, um, if you could show me hands, has anybody done, who's done a for sale by owner successfully? I'd love to see if anybody's done that. All right. Some people I can't, I can't see you because of, but if you could just go ahead in the chat. Um, all right. And so, you know, I know it's a little scary to put yourself out there to call a seller and, um, you know, just start having a conversation. Uh, but, you know, this is why I think mindset around this is more important. Your mindset is more important than any, even the scripts, your mindset is more important because you have to, for me, this is what I had to do. I had to stop trying to guess what that person was thinking. I had to stop trying to guess why they didn't want to talk to me, how many people they hung up on. I had to stop telling myself stories. I think what I like about Will Smith's video is that he describes lying in bed earlier in the video, he describes lying in bed and going out with his, going out with his buddies the night before the jump and lying in bed thinking like, should I do this? All the reasons not to. And you know, we can be, we can convince ourselves of anything. So the one thing I think is great is if you're, if you're going to pursue these for sale by owners, you know, know your why. That is, I, I know it's, it sounds so cliche and we've heard it again and again, but whatever it is that you're trying to raise money for in your business, you have to have a really good, strong reason that is going to pull you by your gut and get past these objections that you have in your head and these stories that you're telling yourself. Every day I do affirmations. Every day I talk to myself. I keep saying I'm going to make a vision board. I don't have one probably because it would change all the time, but I, you know, I have three whys in my life. It's my, and they're adults now, my three children. Um, but you know, I'm fin I, I paid for two kids entire, you know, top of the line, most expensive school in the country colleges, and I'm still paying for them with their student loans, but you know, uh, helping them get started in life. I met a guy earlier this year who was, uh, uh, I guess he was a billionaire with a B. And what he does, you know, he's no longer um, making money for his family per se, but now he's got grandchildren and he's building private school funds for them to have the best education. So to me, those are my whys and why I get up every day and building what I'm building. So you have to be tied to your strong why. And with for sale by owners, there's two things I want you to remember. You have to come from contribution. You have to be calling them, uh, how can I help you? What, what's, what's in it for them? I, you know, agents, sometimes they're so hungry. They're so hungry for their next paycheck. They get this thing I call commission breath and people were human beings. We can smell it from a mile away. Somebody wants to come at you like they're coming from relationship, but they're really looking for a paycheck. There's something in our uh, limbic brain that knows, and it will just turn us off and those people won't be able to sell us anything. So you'll have to be coming from contributions, coming for, to help them, and they definitely need our help right now. So 
Um, so good, so far so good. I just wanna make sure I'm hitting all the, all the high notes for you. Any questions? Let me look at the chat really fast. Where did it go? Oh, Jan, I need help here. Basically, um, Karen just said she didn't list any FISBOs, but she sold two of them. And okay. then Kathy says the same thing. My first two deals were FISBOs, but she awesome. didn't list it. And then I just said, you have to um, know that you can get them what they want, which, which yep. is you're not calling to bug them. You're not calling to, you know, bother them. You're calling them because you know you can help them get what they want. And, and sometimes it's about finding out what it is, what they want. But let me just tell you quickly, we're going to talk about tools for success. Thank you all. Um, oh, the other reason that you should listen to me, I built two real estate businesses from scratch and for sale by owners were absolutely part of this. My first year in business in 1999, there were no, there really wasn't an internet with information like we have. And I wasn't buying books on how to do real estate. No one told me you weren't supposed to do listings. So I just went out and got listings because I was, <laughs> I was too silly to know that that you know, that's not normally how people start. And so I started calling a for sale by owner in my neighborhood. And he was one of my earliest listings, probably within four months of in my, um, my business. He was the only for sale by owner. But then once I had success with him, I started making it part of my repertoire all the time. So that was my 1999 to 2014 career in Pennsylvania, where I ran my business at an 85% profit margin. And if you don't know what your profit margin is, I assure you, it probably wasn't 80, it's probably not 85%. Um, my accountant was stunned because he did all um, real estate agents taxes and he thought I'd missed some expenses, but I have never been the kind of person who likes to spend money on leads because I've never found enormous success. I'd rather just go out and create it for myself rather than waiting for the phone to ring. But the most important thing for you to know is I did have to do this again in 2017, three years ago um, in uh, March, I left my team leader position with uh, the big red company. I was in a very, you know, great Silicon Valley location. I was making plus six figures a year as a team leader. When I decided to come over to be an agent with eXp, I also had $4,000 a month rent. And since I gave up my salary, I had to hurry up and build a business from scratch. And the very first thing I did was went right back to what I knew I could do to create money right away. So within Two and a half weeks of leaving my team leader position, I had a $552,000 listing from Craigslist. Well, I'm going to get you there. I'm going to tell you how to get there. So let's talk about tools for success. The number one thing you'd have to talk, that you have to have is the right mindset. And we, talk, we talked about that. Um, you know, the number two thing, you have to have a discipline around this. Even if you just do it one day a week for three hours, I'm, I, I don't care. You're still going to have success. As long as you commit to doing it, you have to kind of learn the system, the systems that I'm going to talk about, and they're not hard. You're already using them, but you do have to time block and have discipline for this. Put it in your calendar. I like Mondays. Mondays are great days to go after for sale by owners because they've just gone through the weekend. They might've held their own open house. They didn't get an offer. And now it's Monday and they're scratching their heads thinking about what to do next. Um, the other thing you need to have for this is your cell phone. People will go out. I know a lot of agents will go out and get ready to get ready. I have to have this and I have to have that and I have to have this and I have to have that before I can even begin. You can start talking to for sale by owners today. You can do it via your cell phone simply as this. If you want to go really high level and make it your full-time niche that you work, Get the three-line dialer and do all that stuff, but start here so you can start to get a feel for it. Your cell phone. The other thing that you should have is the do not call list, and you want to check this with your state broker to make sure um, you know what the rules are regarding for sale by owners in your state. Uh, I I always operate, generally speaking, that if the for sale by owner has published their number on Zillow or Craigslist, they should be fair game, but. I want to make sure that, be, you know, you guys are safe and you don't get in trouble. Um, disclaimer, I'm not telling you to just call people because it's very serious to violate the do not call list. Um, I think I saw at my last company, there was a $60,000 fine for somebody, yes, for somebody violating the do not call list. Now they were doing circle prospecting. It wasn't for sale by owner, but still. 
And so you need your phone, you need a schedule, you need to commit. And then the last thing is you need some sort of follow-up system because here is where the money gets made. It's not the first call that you're gonna make to the for sale by owner and they're gonna say, come list my house today. It's not gonna work like that. But you do need a way to follow up with them. It could be something as simple as your notebook. I'm, I, I'm sitting next to my, in my office and sitting next to about a box full of about 25 notebooks because I don't always have my phone open or my computer is not always charged in with me when I'm taking notes on whatever it is I'm doing. But you know, writing down what the person said and putting it into your CRM later. Um, KV Core is great if you have that system because you can hashtag and then you can put them, hashtag them for sale by owner, you know, Peachtree City, and then follow up that way. Google Sheets, I, you have to do what works for you. I can't tell you that, but you do have to have a follow-up system. The, because in the consistency of follow-up is where you're gonna get the listing. Um, and then the, uh, and, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but the other thing you need is a consistent list of fresh prospects to be able to do this. So. Why is this thing sometimes moving forward and sometimes not? Let's see. Now my slides won't move. I'm sorry about this, guys. I don't think my computer likes me today. There we go. Um, so those are the tools that you need to have. Here is where to get your for sale by owners. Super, super easy. That story that I told three years ago when I got my listing within two and a half weeks of leaving my um, salaried role, it was literally an, a manual hunt on Craigslist in the San Francisco Bay Area. I, um, and I can show you this in my Facebook group where how I toggle and how I do everything on Craigslist and how I connected to this IFTT.com. Basically, I'm gonna tell you quickly without showing you Craigslist how to do it. You go on Craigslist, you put in your, your state, you find your geographic area. I'm sure you've all used Craigslist already. In your geographic area, maybe you just want to hunt one zip code and you can put that zip code in the side filters. Uh, houses for sale. When you're under houses for sale, you can toggle it. There's one that says broker or for sale by owner. You want only the for sale by owners. Caveat on Craigslist. There's a lot of junk in there, depending on where you are. Um, and some places, like I have a beach house in New Jersey, people do not use Craigslist in South Jersey. I don't understand it. There are very few people listing anything in Craigslist in South Jersey. It's somehow it must just be, you know, demographic information. I, I don't understand it, but you're going to get a lot of junk in there, which is why I like to use this ifttt.com. This, this is a scraping tool, which basically you can connect your search that you have set up on Craigslist to get connect and to get emailed to you. I have created a junk email account for myself called for Fizbo's Craigslist at gmail.com. So any new for sale by owners that come up on Craigslist, instead of me hunting manually on a daily or semi daily basis, it just gets filtered to this junk email address where I can go in and pull out the ones that are real and the rest of them I put in the trash and it's not mixed in with my regular business or personal email. So Craigslist is a great place to find them. Um, Zillow, these are all PS, this is all stuff you can do right now unless you're in New York and stay tuned for that. <coughs> Zillow is the best place to find them. They have great data on there. Zillow, if you go to Zillow and you type in your city, wherever it is you're doing business or where you wanna do business, at the top you're gonna to see a, a button that says for sale and there's an arrow on the side that you can pull down that menu and it'll say, for sale by agent, for sale by owner, pre-foreclosure, new construction, land, some other things. Uncheck everything and only check for sale by owners. The map will pop up and you might only have two or three things in your exact area that you put in, but then you can remove boundary on the map and you'll see all the other for sale by owners. What I love about the Zillow function is that you can see how many days they've been on Zillow for sale by owner you can see their price reductions. And the thing that makes me laugh every doggone single time that I see a price reduction, remember they're trying to save money and yet most of the time their price reduction is in excess of the 6% that they would have paid us. And meanwhile, no one's looking at their property. Um, anyone, this is one of the things that I like to say to the for sale by owners, right, especially right now, only the very serious buyers 
are out looking right now and you doggone sure they're working with a real estate agent because the inventory is down. So they're, the, that buyer is not even seeing their property because it's not on the MLS. Um, other places that I like to look for for sale by owners is Facebook Marketplace. And within fa and Facebook Marketplace, you can set up filters and I can't go into all that because of our time limit only because I would talk to you guys about this for an hour and a half, but I do have a board meeting right directly after this. But you can set up filters in your Facebook Marketplace and do a search. Hey, listen, even if there's nothing in your town specifically, maybe you find something in a couple towns over and you can refer it to somebody or co-list it with somebody and have another agent in another market work that, um, you know, piece of business. A uh, couple more places I love to find for sale by owners, biggerpockets.com. I'm an investor and I like to teach women how to invest and biggerpockets.com is a great website. It's free. You just have to create a login in there. There's all kinds of education on how to be an investor, how to do your first investment, well, all different kinds of investments. And then there's also a marketplace in there. And there's where investors who have properties are trying to sell their properties. So that's another whole niche that you can just work with. The other ways that for sale by owners, this is funny, this is from data I collected. For sale by owners, the number one way that they um, list their properties is with yard signs. Imagine that this is a supply and demand business because we know that it is. And imagine that your highest and best chance of getting top dollar is by having the most eyeballs on your property. And the, and the number one thing you do is put a yard sign up. Oh my gosh. Like that is crazy. So, Hey, but if you're driving around clearing your head during this pandemic and you see somebody with a for sale by owner yard sign, definitely they have their hand up. Other ways that I've learned recently, well, online classifieds, maybe your local um, shop or newspaper or things like that might have for sale by owners, community bulletin boards, there's a couple of for sale by owner sites, fisbo.com, for sale by owner.com, um, fsbo.com. This one is new to me and I haven't delved into it yet, but I love it and it's exciting. YouTube, people are putting their for sale by owner, for sale by owner houses on YouTube. Oh yeah, they're tech savvy and you're tech savvy. That's a great conversation. A um, couple of other things. You can look for, uh, depending on your locality, you can find, in California, we have a thing called notice of defaults and you can buy lists of those things. There's pre-foreclosure listings in Zillow, which you can, you know, that, that takes a special heart and a special thick skin to work with the people who are in pre-foreclosure, but they do need your help. So if you have the heart for it and you have ways of solving their problem, that's awesome. Sheriff sale listings. Those, what I find with sheriff sale people, maybe they're trying to work it out with their bank and maybe, maybe not right now while everybody's in, you know, foreclosure uh, freezes, but even people who are in foreclosure freezes are still going to want to get rid of the property and not everybody's going to want to stay there and ride it out. So I like to look at sheriff sale listings in my local county government. Um, all right. So any questions? Oh, I can see the chat now. I'm so excited. Let's see. Jan's got to go. Anybody have any questions before we move on to the next? All right. So far, so good. I'd lo I, I don't love to talk to myself completely, but um, I guess I do talk to myself, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So, so now you've got yourself geared up to make those calls. You've got a list, something that's interesting. Really, really quickly, let me tell you a couple of caveats back about Zillow. Read what they say, because sometimes the ones that have their hands up that I'm going to call first, the ones that have their hands up and they're offering out a buyer agent commission, because there's multiple opportunities within that conversation. One is, um, hey, I saw that you're offering a buyer agent commission. You might have a buyer for it. Hey, I see that you're offering a buyer agent commission. Do you mind if I advertise this out to my network of agents? or buyers, or put it on my website, or hold your open house for you. Um, you know, that's a huge conversation because already they don't hate real estate agents. They recognize our value. They think they can do the marketing for the listing themselves. That's fine. But those are the first people I'm going to talk to. The other thing to look for with Zillow, kind of annoying. Some agents are sticking their listings on there under for sale by owner. So just make sure when you um, read through the posting, 
I always just copy paste the number and uh, Google their phone number and make sure it's not a real estate agent. In the Bay Area, it's so crazy competitive for business here that I've seen agents do just that. Um, you know, advertise a listing, or it might not even be a listing. It's a picture of a Google satellite, and you know it's not legit. So you're going to have to comb through that as well. Um, okay, so what to say and how to say it. As I mentioned before, I think that, you know, coming from contribution is, is great and uh, having empathy because I can't imagine, you know, I can't imagine trying to be a seller right now anyway with all the uncertainty. Trying to be a seller who doesn't know what they're doing in a market that's never been experienced before. Um, wow. So I want to empathize with them. So turn off your commission breath. Get ready to pick up the phone. Yes, you might get hung up on. It might happen. You might stumble with your words. Let me see. There's a chat here. Let's see. You need help with this. You need help with this. What to say? Yeah. And I, like I said, at the end, I'm going to give you my Facebook group because we could literally spend an entire day role playing and it would be so much fun just on how to, what to say and how to say it and what the, you know, person's objections might be and objection handlers and things. This is what I want to say is, you know, um, there's, there's so many and I've been tweaking what I'm saying right now because of the pandemic. Like for example, um, here, here's what I would say right now. And I want to come in. I'm going to just say a couple more points about this. Um, the key is to be friendly, non-combative, supportive, and curious. We know we can help them, but we want to come in friendly, non-combative, because they're going to say things to you that's going to make you think that they think they know everything. And they, you know, they're just finding out exactly little what they know. And just to be non-combative and supportive. Get what to give them for follow-up so they don't use this. Okay, we'll get there. Um, so the first thing, if I'm picking up the phone, here's just an example today. I'll call someone with, uh, you know, oh, Mrs. Jones, is this, is, are you listing the house at 1234 Main Street? I want to find out that they're the seller because the other thing that you're going to find out, you're going to find some junk out there are people who are wholesalers and they've put somebody's property up and they're trying to collect the commission in the middle. I don't even know how this is legal. Quite frankly, you guys, I have people who are advertising properties for other people and saying that they're helping them get their house sold walls. Like I have my broker's license in three States. I'm pretty sure that's practicing real estate without a license. I don't know what you guys think. And I, you know, I try not to turn people in, but that feels like they're trying to practice real estate without a license. So I'm, uh, the, so I make that, is, is that your house at one, two, three, four main street? Are you the seller of one, two, three, four main street? I'm trying to find out. I'm actually talking with the decision maker or somebody who actually owns the property. And the next thing might be someone, they might say back to you. Oh, well, yeah, I guess technically it's my mother's house, but she passed away information, information. I'm always just gathering information. My main point when I pick up the phone to call a for sale by owner is I just want to build a relationship and score an invite to look at the house. That's all I'm calling for. I'm not calling to list the house today because really they could be insane and I don't deal with insane people no matter how much money is on the line. Um, so if the seller is uh, someone who starts I don't know, eliciting responses that make me think they might be a crazy person or that they need some re really ridiculous number. Um, I'm not going to do business with them. But the first thing I want to do is try to find out that I'm actually dealing with a person who could invite me to look at the house and does have authority to sign a listing contract. So, but my point is just to get my foot in the door, build the relationship, get my foot on the door. So I would say, Oh, Mrs. Jones. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, congratulations and welcome to the real estate business. How are you liking it so far? And, you know, making, trying to, you know, warm them up a little bit, how they like being a real estate agent, um, getting a lot of calls from, you know, pesky investors, pesky agents. And then I want to know, Hey, how's everything going now with the pandemic and showings? Like, what are you doing? I am just asking them questions to get them to tell me what is going on in their world. Cause I'm sensing for how long they've been doing it, what they're, experience level is with this, what the frustration level is. That's really what I'm looking for because that'll tell me about timing. And so, and, and then I really like to, it's not nice of me, but it's true. I like to plant a little seed of doubt for them 
you know, somewhere along in this conversation, I say, gosh, you know, uh, there's such super reduced inventory because of the pandemic. I'm surprised the house is still not sold yet. Just a little planting of a seed. And then, um, and then I say, you know, tell, tell me about your house. I'm, I'm just so curious. And then let them talk. Really, all of my questions are designed to get them to not, I don't want any yes or no questions. And I'm sure you gals all know this. No yes or no questions because that doesn't really, you know, facilitate a conversation basically. And we're trying to learn everything we can about their house. And they might ask you, do you have a buyer? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but we'll get, you know, maybe we'll get to that later um, because they are going to come back to you with some, you know, are you trying to list a house? Nope. I'm not trying to list a house. I, you know, called to see what you had and how your, how it was going because, you know, I have a network of agents in the area and I just wanted to see what your experience was now that, you know, now that you're listing your property. Um, so I want to try to engage them to tell me about the house. How many beds and baths? I can see that online. Okay, have you done any renovations? Oh, that's awesome. Just trying to learn about the house. And then back to like, you know, have you had any open houses? What have the buyers said that come through? Um, is anyone threatening an offer? And then when they don't have an offer or better yet, when somebody's threatening an offer and it never comes through, yeah, well, I guess the problem also might be, you know, there's a reduced pool of buyers right now with the layoffs and uncertainty and, you know, all the um, iBuyer platforms with the exception of my company have shut down. Nobody's directly buying, nobody's giving sellers cash offers, you know, on the spot in a couple of days anymore. So, and then I also like to bring up, yeah, and then the serious buyers, those poor people, they're out there hunting it down with their realtors because they need to move. They have a huge sense of urgency. So they're really only the people that need to move are absolutely working with a realtor because they need access to everything that comes on the market like immediately. So these are the questions that I'm trying to get them engaged to talk about their experience being a real estate agent selling their own house. I just, just the same as I would say to, you know, Mary, Bryce and Mary, how's it going in your market? Like, what can you agents do? How are you, how are you guys selling houses there? This, I'm treating this person like a peer, an equal, and having empathy and actually sympathy for them. Um, then I want to know, do they have any inspections? Um, so I bring up the roller coaster real estate market again, and you know, here's some, you know, I'd say, oh my goodness, you know, people that qualified in in the middle of March no longer qualify, especially if you're in a market in California or other high price markets. This is true story. Every uh, jumbo loan products have gone away. I don't know what they're going to do to replace them, but getting a mortgage is hard right now. They're trying to tighten up the credit and everything. And then products, products just don't exist. Anything over 765 loan amount is gone. So there's ways to cobble it together, but I am telling you a regular um, homeowner is not going to be the one to do it. Okay. So um, anyway, so I would, it's my whole point getting to know them is just to create. Yeah, M Michelle, I'm going to get back to you about that New York thing. Let me find out about that. And then I'll put my thinking cap on, on how to help you. Cause I, I I'm a, I'm a solutions provider for sure. Um, my whole point of this is, you know, now this, you're going to have to tailor to what you can do in your market. I'd love to come take a look at the property. This works in normal, you know, we don't have coronavirus. Could, could I come by for 15 minutes, just a quick tour, because this area is my area of expertise and I'm always working with buyers for this area because this is where I do business. And I think your property might suit one of them, but I can't be sure till I see it. 15 minutes, I'll just run in and out. And of course that's, you know, we're gonna try to develop the relationship further for that to not happen. But that's usually what I do. I leave the conversation with, can I come by for a quick look to see if it suits the group of buyers that I'm working with? Now, in this time, uh, you know, you're going to have to say, could you send me some pictures? You're going to have to develop the relationship a little more, uh, what do I want to say, intentionally. And if you're not allowed to actually go visit the property, if it's vacant, you're good to go in most states. But if it's not, you're gonna to have to work on the relationship building skill more than you would have to do in a regular situation. So in a regular situation, my goal of this conversation, and I don't even give myself a time limit for this, 
um, I, I like to have these conversations, just keep the conversation flowing, asking them questions. So here's where you're gonna go left or right. They may say, yes, you can come by and see it, great. I think um, urgency is important in this. So if you can see it within the next 24 hours, that's awesome. They might be traveling, who knows, in a normal situation. You know, pivots that we're gonna have to do because of pandemic, we're gonna have to think about how do we get in there? Um, in California, I could still go see a property. We have a form. The seller, I'm gonna insist that they're not even, you know, if they wanna be there, that we should, they should probably wait outside. I'm gonna be masked, they're gonna be masked. We're gonna have the gloves, I have booties, all that stuff. Um, but if they say no, and that's, that's going to happen sometimes, that's okay. Just keep in touch every other day at the beginning. How's it going? Or once a week, um, this is where the follow-up starts really for me, the follow-up has proven to be the place where, you know, they're going to be mm, suspicious. I don't want to say suspicious of you, but they don't know you. They don't know how great you are, but you know how great you are and you know that you're, you're there to help them. And so really it's just, um, you know, to build the relationship and keep letting them know that they're top of mind for you. So here's one thing that I try to do before I get off the phone of this, either I'm getting the appointment. Yes. And I really like for them to be the one to ask me to come over. I'm going to be so friendly and helpful and conversant on the market that usually they end up inviting me to come take a look because they think I might be working with buyers and I'm a resource. Um, but one thing I want to do before I end this conversation is offer to send them competitive listings. So, you know, here's what the competition is doing, or here's what the last one sale was. I'm not giving anybody an RPR report or a CMA, because that costs me money, they're not getting it for free. I want their email, that's all I want. So that when I see an article on the real estate market in our area during the pandemic, I'm gonna send it to them. Um, don't put this in a drip campaign. You need to be working these people daily. You might have a campaign set up, and when you really get a big funnel of these, you're going to have to do it, but in the initial stages of this game, you wanna do the work yourself. You want to, every other day, send them something. I saw this article and I was thinking of you. Hey, did you see that your neighbor's house just came on the market and it's already under contract during the pandemic? And that is, you know, sometimes, except for New York, Michelle, that is sometimes going to be the conversation. Um, the other way, you know, it's less full frontal contact. And I like, you know, belly to belly, voice to voice. You can text people even from the outset. Sometimes I use the text on Craigslist at the initial contact to determine if the person is actually the person sell, who's in, you know, on title to sell the house. Um, okay, you're still selling, just different. Awesome, thank you, Michelle. And so you can use text, if you're gonna do this in, the, in, like in a, a high volume way, you can use text to reach out to the people and say, hey, I saw your house on Craigslist. Can you give me more information? Um, and then one, and in that text stream, I'm gonna ask if they are the seller or I get the address and I look in the uh, tax records, if they're not the seller, their chances are, and then I'll ask them, are you a wholesaler or are you the seller? Cause I just, I'm not gonna waste my time on wholesalers. Um, and, and it's not because I don't like wholesalers, it's just not a highly effective use of my time. So don't be annoying, stay top of mind. Just, and really remember, you're trying to help them coming from contribution. Even one of the conversations could be, you know, okay, um, you know, I know you're not ready, maybe, maybe whatever, whatever you want to say to them about how do you frame it that you could bring a buyer? Would they be interested in paying, you know, would they pay a commission if you brought them a buyer? But I think that's further down the road. I'm still just trying to get in the door. Um, one thing, another thing to do before you start doing this, today is a great time to do it, is to check out what you look like on LinkedIn and check out what you look like on Zillow and make sure you have some reviews in there if you're not a brand new agent. Because for these people under 45 years old, they are checking you out on the internet. I learned this from my millennial. Everybody, they, they know more about you than we, they know what our websites and everything looks like, our reputation on the internet more than we do. Um, just, just by texting them, they're probably looking up the number and seeing who it is and seeing how many houses they sold and what they do for fun and what their Facebook profile is and all this stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to say for EXP agents who are on the call, 
the, the one other opportunity that you have is because we have that iBuyer platform and it is not shut down, we are selling to investors with 48 hour cash offers. This is an additional conversation that you can have with your for sale by owners. And I don't want to go into that right now, but just know that you can be calling, you know, to list the property. You could be calling to just it, pop it on the iBuyer platform and you could charge them a minimal commission because you're only going to be, um, only going to be paying a listing commission, not a buyer side commission if they're for sale by owner. If you have questions about that, ask me. Okay, so the appointment. You've gotten, you've gotten yourself finally in the door. It might have taken four weeks, it might have taken 48 hours, but you're in the door. So remember I said I'm going not with commission breath. I'm, this is kind of a trick. It's a listing appointment, but it's not. You're not going prepared with your briefcase and your suit on and you're ready to present, la la la. You're literally going there with your note, note pad to take notes and you're a little more casual than you would be on a listing appointment. You have an RPR and a CMA, but it's not for them. Um, it's just your homework. Before you go to this appointment, you're going to do all the research. You're going to know the activity, the inventory, the list of sold price percentage, who their builder was, the rate of absorption in their zip code and their neighborhood and where their value is versus the recent solds plus the pandemic. You're going to have an idea about all these things. And the reason I ask you to do this is not for any other reason that once you know this stuff, you're going to be so confident when you go to this meeting because you're going to know way more than they do. They're going to know their house better than you do, but you're going to know their little micro market better than they do. Um, dress the part. I wouldn't go for my full listing appointment suit. Um, East Coast people wear suits. California, if you wear suit, people would laugh at you and be like, you're too serious. Um, and, you know, but so dress professionally, but not ready for, you know, you're getting inducted into the hall of fame. I don't bring my briefcase to this appointment. I bring a folder with my EXP information in it. And I bring a notepad because really I'm just there to take notes. What I love to do, and this is a little psychology. Oh my goodness. Are we almost out of time? I have seven more minutes. Um, can you tell I love this subject and I'm sorry, hopefully, hopefully you're getting value from this. I could talk about this all day. Uh, cruise the neighborhood ahead of time and be at their house 10 minutes early. Be across the street from their house 10 minutes early. Unless they have a driveway and it's a long driveway, then that's a different story. But you want to look like you're a professional. You're very interested in their neighborhood, their house. So what I like to do is get there a few minutes early and look at the house from the buyer's eyes. Sit across the street, look at the roof, look at their landscaping. Is it touching the house? Do they have a cracked sidewalk somewhere? How's their curb appeal? Um, what's the yard? You want to make sure your car is clean because you want to have, you know, create that first impression. Okay, so you, you know, five minutes before the appointment, you walk up the sidewalk, knock on the door because you want to be a little bit early, not late. Um, and then knock on the door, do the niceties, be grateful, you know, for the opportunity and then ask them, you're in the foyer. I'm expecting you're in the foyer. You have your business cards. So they know that you're not, you know, some, a stalker or something. Um, and then when you're in the foyer, you ask for the tour because you, you don't want to sit down and talk. Your main point is show me what you've got. And then I always say on this part, you have to be prepared to fall in love. So let them give you the grand tour of the house, ask questions, note the decor, their diploma on the wall. Oh, you went to Michigan State. My friend Johnny went to Michigan State. What did you study? La, 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 la. You know, how did you like it there? Johnny loved it. You know, just, I'm just building the friendship. Everybody, I feel like everybody's a friend I haven't met yet. And so that's really the way I think. So it really helps me in uh, building rapport in this situation. But basically you're looking, you're looking at the house through the buyer's eyes. You're looking at the house or you're professional eyes and you're also looking for opportunities to, you know, find common ground. And so, um, and then here's where you can notice or ask about any upgrades or repairs. You can, you know, sometimes you'll see a patch in the ceiling where there might've been water damage and you want to ask them about that because number one, you're noticing number two, oh shoot, this person is a professional and they're noticing that I thought people wouldn't notice. Now I have to talk about that. Um, 
But your whole point in this part of the conversation, this, you know, taking the tour is to knock down their walls and, um, you know, get them the, you're building rapport and trust. And then, you know, jokingly, you can ask them, how many times have you had to do this already? Like, uh, you probably can recite this in your sleep. It's making a joke, making a friendship, but also determining, all right, how many times have they been through this? How, how tired of this are they yet? And you're also picking away at their confidence and discerning their time commitment. Um, because the number one problem for, for sale by owners, everybody, we know, you and I all know what it takes to do this job on a full-time basis. It's uh, a lot of work, even for a listing. You know, I know, I'm, I'm thinking about listings that I have. I went out on a listing appointment and at Christmas time, it's just coming to market next week. We've been doing paperwork and prepping and discussions and, you know, legal discussions because it's probate. It takes a lot of work to get this done and now add in the pandemic. Oh my goodness. So most people for sale by owners don't have the time. Ask them how many offers they've had and how did that go? If they, whatever number they say, how did that go? Um, ask them for the disclosure for the property. 60% uh, of the time they don't have it and they think they don't need one because they're for sale by owner, but that's not true. Um, and then commiserate with the market so volatile, how, comf how comfortable are you evaluating someone's financing? Oh my gosh, can you imagine being at closing day and the deal falls apart because somebody's verification of employment changed? Uh, you know, I'm planting mom, I'm, the, I'm confident in my expertise and you don't even know what could go wrong. I'm starting to tell them what could go wrong without directly telling them it could go wrong. Um, and then ask them about their price. How'd they get there? You want to know, did they have a realtor give them a CMA? That's a good question. You know, this is a great question to elicit that. And you also want to know how firm they are on their price. Um, a lot of times what I find with people, I spent $50,000 on a new kitchen last year, and that's why my price is $50,000 higher than everybody else's. Oh, okay. And then when I'm back at my desk, I'm going to send them that email from NAR does a report every year about the return on investment on your upgrades. And it's never a hundred percent. So, you know, here's a friendly, Hey, I can understand, you know, you were thinking that here's what the experts say that, you know, you could, you could, should expect to get as a return. So, okay. I just want to quickly, quickly um, wrap up here. I, I don't, I can't miss my board meeting. I'm super sorry, but I'm talking about the close. So here we are, we've done the tour, we've built rapport. If you've built enough rapport and demonstrated enough expertise, sometimes, you know, they're going to ask you, well, so if I did list Susie, you know, what would that look like? They're going to start asking you questions. This is when they're tired. Um, if they're not tired, Hey, uh, Mrs. Jones, you know, thank you so much for the tour today. I really appreciate it. I, I have so much better of understanding of what this looks like. You know, the pictures on the internet don't tell the, tell the whole story of how great the location is of your house or whatever, whatever you have to find to say to fall in love. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I've had success helping other for sale by owners get, get moved on to their next place. You want a future pace. Talk about where they're going. You need to find out where they're going and then you want to talk about that at the end. Um, would, would it be helpful to you? You know, a lot of times when the seller does the open house, the people that come through are nervous and they, you know, we're, we're Americans. We don't ever want to say anything to offend each other directly to each other's faces. So we're not going to tell you that we don't like the way the kitchen is laid out or the color of the carpet is turning us off and we don't, you know, know how to overcome that. So instead, when your people come through your open house, they're just going to say, oh yeah, it was really nice. Thank you. We'll follow up. And you never hear from them. If I do an open house, I will, uh, I won't let people in the door unless they agree to fill out this form that says they're going to give feedback on the price, on the condition, you know, what would it take for them to buy it? What, you know, why would they never buy it? And then you'll have real information so you can make a good decision. How does that sound? You know, I'm trying to help them. Yeah, I'm going to take a one day listing and then they're going to say, well, well you yeah, know, but I'm not paying a commission. Okay, great. Well, you know, I, you know, this is a way, if it's a one day listing, I have to cover myself from a liability standpoint with a one day listing. And what if I, you know, the buyers I get, if it's not for your house, I can take them somewhere else. But if it's for your house, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But really what we need right now is the information. We need to know what buyers are thinking about your property and you're not getting any feedback. 
and and we as agents know the feedback is critical okay so that's um you know i i also like to say i really think i can help you get back to your real life um you know you won't have any more strangers or looky loos or bottom feeders coming through your house um you know i have a network of however many people are in your group mine's twenty eight thousand people in my group i have a network of twenty eight thousand people working with only serious buyers and you, you know, you really need to get your house in front of the, the serious buyers who have the capability of buying your home. And it's not going to be on this, these drive bys or whatever, um, ask to put it in your Facebook business page to help them market it on the internet for the buyer commission, host our open house. You could do the hosting their open, open house virtually. You could do a virtual open house and just to get the feedback and then leave behind something for them to remember you by. I like to leave behind my resume, some of the houses, pretty houses that I've sold, um, and you know, a little bit about my company. That's it. Another nice little touch that I like to do, oops, I'm over time, girls, I am so sorry, um, is uh, I like to pop back when they're not expecting it with like a flower or a little thank you gift for the tour. Now, if it's super far out of your way, you could send them a Starbucks card. It's the same thing. People are looking for you to do something out of the ordinary. So if you're just calling and saying, I'm going to list your house, la la la, you, you know, that's not going to happen. You have to stand out from the crowd. Um, okay. Got a quick, thank you, Kathy. Um, look for this recording. I have a couple more follow-up things and I'm just going to be a little late for my board meeting and what the heck, who cares? Um, and so here's my Facebook group, Susie's Fizbo Rockstars. I'm friends with a lot of you already on Facebook. Just join that group. I have all my scripts in there. I have the stats in there that we talked about. Um, here's, here's um, let me go back to follow up really quickly. Text or email them instead of constantly calling them. And just with things of value, things that you are thinking about them just lets you stay top of mind. There's that thank you note and the flower or the Starbucks gift card. If they're having an open house and we're out of you know, pandemic, pop into their open house, stay on their radar. Call them every couple of weeks and see how it's going. If you see there's a price reduction, ask them what made them do that. You're going to be their new best friend in this business. Um, and after four weeks, most likely you're going to be the only agent still talking to them. Oh, also in my for sale by owner group, I teach, I te this is one recording, but in my for sale by owner group, I have one where I did a, ma a mastermind with some agents on a Saturday. And I will tell you, and this is free. This is just because I love to help women and help agents. Um, agents have watched my video and taken listings within 24 hours of watching it. So literally what I'm telling you works. <laughs> so, um, any questions before I have to run to my meeting? Thank you everyone so, so much. I really enjoyed teaching this. I hope you got value out of it. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to unmute you all. I don't know how to unmute you all. Do I have this ability? All right. Well, I should go because I'm Thank late for you. my meeting. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you. Wishing you all great success. Feel free to reach out anytime. If you have any questions, I'm here for you. All right. Bye. Thank you.